Cat Williams joins Kevin Hart's ex-wife to expose his dark secrets. Gay parties Diddy. Yo, man, Cat, you cool, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm cooler than a fan. My they took my children from me. Yeah, I mean, How I was, terrible is that? I, I did want to ask, um, the cops, uh, you know, allegedly found what? some guns. and Yeah, they always find... Guess what's happening in the comedy world? Torrey Hart, Kevin Hart's ex-wife, just dropped. A bombshell. She's hitting the road with none other than Cat Williams. And it looks like the man must be seething on the inside. Shut up, bitch. You gonna lose. I guarantee you that. Boss, Shut do you up. think you're rich? Am I rich? Do you think you're wealthy? I'm gonna stop today. You can live ever. Nigga, I work every day. I said if it Torre spilled the beans on her Instagram, sharing a snapshot of her and her good friend Williams, revealing a sneak peek into the ongoing Dark Matter tour. And that's not all. She teased us with more dates on the horizon. Your ex-wife is going on tour with Kat. Everybody went, I hope the tour is great. In case you didn't know, Torre is a seasoned comedian and actress, gracing the screens in movies like Super Turnt, Lola 2, and Sebastian. She even embarked on her own Feelin' Extra stand-up tour in 2023, leaving audiences in stitches across the U.S. But wait, there's more. She dropped a single called Lit in 2022, proving her versatility extends to the recording booth. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. Curious minds wanted to know if Torre had a hand in Kevin's stand-up material during their marriage. In an interview on the Russ Parr Morning Show, she spilled the beans. Definitely a lot. We were together almost every day, and before he started comedy, we were together. So there was definitely inspiration. Turns out Torre was the class clown in high school, and their connection in the theater arts class set the stage for their comedic journey. I made a bad error in judgment and put myself in an environment where only bad things can happen, and they did. Digging into the archives, we find Torre's involvement in a reality TV show called Comedy Wives, detailed in divorce proceedings. The show would have showcased her, Lisa Wayans, Mandy Takeda, and Blake Sunshine navigating the comedic and personal hurdles of Hollywood. Torre was painted as the mastermind behind Kevin's success, molding him into the star he is today. Fast forward to the recent announcement, and Torre drops the bomb on Instagram, revealing her stint on Williams' tour. This news follows Cat Williams' verbal jabs at Kevin on the Club Shay Shay podcast, reigniting their long-standing feud. Williams even questioned Kevin's rise to the top, suggesting he might be an industry plant. Kevin responded on social media, keeping his cool and wishing success to everyone. So, what's Kevin's take on Torre joining Williams' tour? When TMZ came knocking, Kevin's response was pure class. I want everybody to win. I hope the tour is great. And that is how Kevin usually acts in public. But what about his other side? The side the world doesn't know about? We yeah, we um we want to thank you. Come here. Don't don't sit on the bed or not. No homo. No, just just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close to the bed. But it's just like yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man. Man, you, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it. And you did. No. Despite his comedic charisma and success, Kevin Hart found himself in the crosshairs of a blackmail attempt. The surprise factor was high, considering how openly he expresses his love for his wife, Anaku Parrish. In a September 2017 Instagram video, a visibly distressed Hart confessed to making a regrettable mistake. He acknowledged the target on his back and admitted to putting himself in a compromising situation. I'm not perfect. I made a bad error in judgment. I put myself in an environment where only bad things can happen. And they did, shared Hart. He acknowledged the impact on his closest relationships, especially his wife and kids, and expressed remorse for his actions. Without going into explicit details, he addressed an extortion attempt tied to his mistakes. TMZ reported that someone was trying to sell a video allegedly featuring Hart engaging in sexually suggestive behavior with another woman in a club and a bed. Hart's representative responded by stating, someone tried to set Kevin up in a failed extortion attempt. As law enforcement is involved, we cannot comment further as it could affect the investigation. Despite the challenges, Kevin Hart faced the situation head-on, refusing to let financial motives dictate the narrative of his mistakes. 
This incident sheds light on the complexities and controversies that even larger-than-life personalities like Kevin Hart navigate in the public eye. TMZ got its hands on a video that supposedly triggered a whole extortion drama involving Kevin Hart. Now, they didn't spill all the explicit details, but they painted a vivid picture of what went down. According to TMZ, the video is described as graphic, featuring a nude man who bears a striking resemblance to the Jumanji star in a rather, let's say, risque scene. While you don't actually see Kevin Hart's face during the juicious part, you do witness the aftermath with a naked man who could very well be the comedian himself. But that's not the only twist in the tale. The video comes with some spicy text cards claiming that Kevin orchestrated the Hurricane Harvey challenge to deflect attention from this impending scandal. The clip alleges that the supposed cheating escapade happened between August 17 and August 20, 2017. According to the text, it's suggested that the whole charitable effort was a smokescreen. The real reason Kevin Hart orchestrated the Texas Hurricane Relief Fund, this so-called good deed, was done to get ahead as he knew this damaging footage was one click away from being exposed as the liar and cheater he is, declares the text in the video. Hold on to your hats because the allegations don't stop there. The video goes on to claim, The weekend of his pregnant wife's birthday, Kevin Hart was recklessly partying with my friends and I drinking, doing drugs, and having sex with multiple women at the Las Vegas Cosmopolitan Hotel. The woman featured in the video that attempted to extort the comedian stepped into the spotlight on September 20th, 2017. Montia Sabag wanted to set the record straight, stating, My name is Montia Sabag. I was involved with Kevin Hart a month ago. Since then, my pictures and my name have been released and lies written about me. I am not an extortionist. I am not a stripper. I am a recording artist and an actress, and I have not broken any laws. I had nothing to do with these recordings. I am truly sorry for any involvement I have had in this. Montia Sabig's attorney, Lisa Bloom, didn't directly address the reports of Sabig allegedly seeking $420,000 for a lie detector test. However, Bloom did highlight that lie detector tests aren't admissible in court and can yield inaccurate results. Bloom emphasized the gravity of the situation, stating, Someone apparently snuck cameras into Kevin Hart's private hotel suite in Las Vegas and recorded bedroom images of the two of them. It is a crime to secretly put cameras in a private place like a hotel room. It is another crime to secretly record people in a private place. It is yet another crime to distribute those images. Montia is the victim of multiple felonies under state and federal laws. She continued, Although it's been reported that law enforcement is investigating, we have no evidence of that. We will be going to the authorities immediately to report this matter. We will fully cooperate with law enforcement. Crucially, Bloom made it clear that Montia and she were not seeking any financial compensation from Kevin Hart. We are not suing him. We are not making any claims against him. Kevin Hart appears to be the victim of this criminal, just as Montia is. We invite Mr. Hart to join us in bringing the perpetrator to justice. To the criminal who did this, I say, you belong in prison, and we are going to find you. According to sources spilled to TMZ, the person trying to extort Kevin Hart wasn't holding back on the demands, asking for a whopping eight figures at one point. The FBI stepped into action, identifying the woman seen with Hart in the incriminating video. They suspect that she's either the one behind the cash demands, or someone with access to her iPhone orchestrated the whole extortion attempt. Now, the insiders close to Hart didn't spill the beans on whether he was the man in the video, but they did confirm that the woman in question had a history with another celebrity, currently gracing the small screen as a TV star. Adding a legal twist to the saga, the video was recorded on an iPhone propped up against an object in the room, which, you guessed it, is against the law when done without consent. Just when you thought it couldn't get crazier, someone claiming to be the potential extortionist reached out to Hart's team. Their proposal? A lie detector test related to the video's contents for a cool $500,000. Hart's legal team, however, didn't take the bait and reportedly declined the offer. As the dust settled, it turns out a former friend of Hart, Jonathan Todd Jackson, found himself on the wrong side of the law. In May 2018, he was charged with one count each of felony attempted extortion and extortion by threatening letter, according to CNN. In a candid moment back in 2016, 
Hart openly shared his take on the risks of infidelity, hinting at the challenges brought by social media. In an interview with The Breakfast Club, Hart expressed, At today's time, man, it's too risky. And not to say that all women are opportunists because that's not fair and that's not true. But there are some women who have given other women a bad name just with the social media and the posting of the in the bed with. Hart went on to explain why he felt being unfaithful was a gamble he wasn't willing to take. He humorously admitted, Even if I were to cheat on Parrish, there's no safe return from it. I wouldn't be a good cheater right now because I don't feel like I can trust you to cheat. I feel like I'd be asking questions. What are you doing? Are you about to post that? It's too much. There's no sanity that comes with it. Why risk it? What am I going to throw it all away for? It's not worth it. Now, fast forward to August 2017, and Eniku Parrish, Kevin's current wife, posted a heartfelt photo celebrating eight years together, one year married, forever to go. But sharp-eyed fans noticed a timeline discrepancy, pointing out that Kevin and his ex-wife, Tori Hart, had been divorced for only six years by that point. In response to the raised eyebrows, Parrish, in a now-deleted comment, clarified, Their marriage was broken way before I came in the picture. They were separated, living in separate homes. I was never a secret. She also alleged that Torre started a rumor about being Kevin's mistress years ago because she wanted to play the victim and not own up to her wrongdoing. I never wrecked any home. Torre entered the fray with a deleted comment of her own, stating, Aniku, sweetheart, normally I don't feed into this, but when you addressed me directly, you forced my hand to respond. You, Kevin, and I know the truth. Adding to the drama, Torre told TMZ, I wish I had the time that she had to sit around and read comments all day long. I really do. Numbers don't lie. Dates don't lie. She emphasized that despite Kevin's narrative, Eniku was, in fact, his mistress and played a role in the breakup of their family. Back on August 19th, 2014, Kevin Hart popped the big question to Eniku Parrish, and luckily for all of us, the sweet moment was caught on video. Now here's where it gets interesting, or maybe a tad suspicious. On the very same day, Hart's ex-wife, Torre Hart, had her television show, Atlanta Exes, premiering. In this show, Torre delves into the topic of Kevin allegedly cheating on her. TMZ, being the detective it is, couldn't help but wonder if the timing of Hart's proposal was fueled by a touch of spite. However, we need to give credit where it's due. The proposal also conveniently fell on Parrish's 30th birthday. Double celebration, anyone? Adding to the intrigue, mere hours after the proposal, Kevin and Parrish reportedly found themselves in the same vicinity as Torre at an Atlanta strip club. According to the spies on duty, the women didn't exactly exchange friendly glances. So, was it a well-timed proposal with a sprinkle of drama or just a coincidence? Back in July 2017, Radar Online got its hands on some eyebrow-raising photos and a video. They showed Kevin Hart engaging in what looked like suspicious behavior with a woman in a car outside a Miami hotel. The woman in question was identified as singer Monique Momo Gonzalez, as reported by the Daily Mail. An observant source spilled the tea to Radar Online, saying, It's obvious they were up to no good. She kept looking over her shoulder, and Kevin was pop-eyed when another guest walked by. Now, this wasn't well received by those close to Eniku Parrish, Kevin's wife at the time, especially considering she was pregnant. An insider expressed their dismay, stating, With his wife at home pregnant, Kevin's behavior is way out of line. His friends are in shock. Eniku needs to be stress-free and feeling safe and secure. It's disgusting that Kevin is doing this to her. <laughs> but this isn't the first time Kevin Hart has found himself in hot water over infidelity. In his 2015 memoir, I Can't Make This Up Life Lessons, he opened up about his past mistakes during his first marriage to Torre Hart. Kevin admitted to having affairs behind Torre's back, attributing it to being young, foolish, and driven by desires. The conflicts in their relationship often led to breakups, during which both indulged in retaliatory actions with other people. One incident Kevin vividly recalled was when Torre temporarily moved out, only to return home and find him with another woman. The confrontation escalated, resulting in Torre damaging the woman's car. 
Kevin acknowledged that the cheating continued after they got married, even involving three random women he met online. He admitted to justifying his actions by feeling mistreated, only to realize he was the one leading a double life. The breaking point came when one of the women he had been involved with allegedly began stalking him. This person ultimately revealed Kevin's affairs to Torre, leading to the end of their marriage. Back in 2000, court documents obtained by Radar Online uncovered an incident where Kevin Hart was arrested for simple assault after a heated altercation with his first wife, Torre Hart. Although the charges were ultimately dismissed, Kevin didn't shy away from addressing the domestic dispute in his book, I Can't Make This Up Life Lessons. In his candid admission, Kevin shared, I was so drunk I couldn't remember what had happened. I didn't have any marks on me, and neither did Torre. Describing the chaotic scene, he explained, As best I can tell, we got in a screaming match, and she decided to call the police because she thought it would hurt more than physical violence. Kevin went on to reveal the regret he felt, acknowledging a shameful moment when the dispute escalated, resulting in scratches on his neck and head, as well as a red swelling mark on Torre's face. Fast forward to August 2017, when Hurricane Harvey wreaked havoc in Texas. Kevin Hart, always ready to take the lead, initiated the Hurricane Relief Challenge, calling out celebrities like Dwayne The Rock, Johnson, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, and Dave Chappelle, he urged them to donate $25,000 each to support recovery efforts. In an Instagram video, Kevin expressed, I think we participated in a lot of challenges on the internet, some meaningful, some meaningless, but we've all done them. However, not everyone was impressed. Master P, for one, appreciated Kevin's donation but felt that the challenge wasn't necessary, emphasizing that giving from the heart mattered most. Even Kevin's pal, Dwayne Johnson, participated but noted that the challenge approach wasn't a requirement, highlighting that people should contribute sincerely. In August 2017, a fan named Jason Collins decided to take legal action against Kevin Hart, claiming he was insulted and assaulted by the comedian's security team. According to TMZ, Collins asserted that, as a VIP guest at Hart's show in Philadelphia on Aug 29, 2015, stadium security approached him aggressively. Allegedly, the stadium security then handed Collins over to Hart's personal security team, who he claimed threatened to tase him, threw him to the ground, and hurled insults his way. The fan sought $50,000 in damages, contending that Hart should be held accountable since it was his hired security that allegedly caused the harm. However, it's crucial to note that Collins didn't disclose why he attracted the initial attention of the stadium security team or why he waited two years to file the lawsuit. So, as with any story, a pinch of skepticism may be in order. On a different note, Kevin Hart made headlines for turning down a significant role in the movie Tropic Thunder due to specific concerns. In a candid revelation to The Breakfast Club in January 2015, Hart expressed regret for not taking the part. He clarified his decision, stating, Before I say this, I'm politically correct to the gay community. I respect and appreciate any and everything that you all do. And as people, I love you. Hart explained that the script he read portrayed the character differently than what was eventually shown in the film, with the character engaging in actions he found objectionable. When asked if he could play a gay role in general, Hart candidly shared, No. Not because I have any ill will or disrespect, it's because I feel like I can't do it because I don't think I'm really going to dive into that role 100% because of the insecurities about myself trying to play that part. In his memoir, I Can't Make This Up Life Lessons, Kevin Hart shared a humorous yet revealing insight into his relationship with alcohol. He humorously admitted, via E! News, When I'm drunk, I think everything is a toilet. Even going as far as recounting an incident where he urinated in Eniku Parish's purse. His explanation shed light on the peculiar logic that takes over when he's inebriated, stating, when I'm wasted, anything with a door looks like a bathroom to me, and anything with a lid or an opening looks like a toilet. So I'll piss wherever I think a bathroom should be. This wasn't the only time Kevin Hart's drinking habits made headlines. According to TMZ, he faced legal consequences in April 2013 when he was arrested for DUI, driving nearly 90 miles per hour and narrowly avoiding a collision with a truck. 
His blood alcohol level was reportedly nearly twice the legal limit, leading to a sentence of three years of probation and three months of alcohol education classes. Shifting gears, Kevin Hart's personal life has also been marked by accusations related to his cheating scandals. Montia Sabag, involved in a sex tape extortion incident with Hart, expressed frustration over what she perceived as Hart using their situation for comedic material and publicity. Hart, in his stand-up act and a promotional video for his Irresponsible Tour, cracked jokes about the Miami and Las Vegas incidents, even poking fun at himself for behaving like a miscreant. Sabig's attorney later criticized Hart's approach, deeming the jokes very distasteful, and emphasizing the toll such situations take on individuals mentally and physically. In November 2018, Kevin Hart and his wife, Eniku Parrish, hosted a birthday party for their son, Kenzo, with a Cowboys and Indians theme. However, this celebration faced criticism for being racially insensitive, and even considered by some as perpetuating stereotypes about Native Americans. When the backlash ensued, Hart addressed the situation on his Straight from the Heart radio show, dismissing it as dumb sot. He defended the theme, emphasizing its innocence in the context of a one-year-old's birthday party. Hart likened it to childhood games like cowboys and Indians or cops and robbers, asserting that it was not intended to be a racial slur. According to the stand-up comic, the theme was merely a playful tradition that people had been engaging in for years. Switching gears, Kevin Hart's past includes instances of making jokes that were criticized as homophobic. In the early days of his career, between 2009 and 2011, Hart's tweets and stand-up material sparked controversy due to language and scenarios that some interpreted as insensitive. When confronted about these past jokes during an interview for the movie Get Hard in 2015, Hart responded with a simple, at the end of the day, funny is funny. In a later interview with Rolling Stone the same year, he acknowledged discontinuing a controversial joke about his hypothetical reaction if his son were gay. However, the decision seemed more rooted in the evolving sensitivity of the times rather than a deeper understanding or compassion for the LGBTQ plus community. I mean, Kevin Hart found himself in the spotlight again in December 2018 when he was announced as the host for the 2019 Oscars. However, the joyous occasion quickly turned into controversy as old tweets and stand-up material with homophobic themes resurfaced, prompting criticism and calls for an apology. In response to the uproar, Hart took to Instagram, sharing a shirtless video from his bed where he expressed frustration. He emphasized personal growth, stating, If you don't believe that people change, grow, evolve as they get older, I don't know what to tell you asserting that he was in a positive and major place in his life, Hart made it clear that he wouldn't be constantly justifying or explaining his past. In a subsequent Instagram clip, he revealed that the Academy had asked him to apologize, but he chose not to, standing firm in his decision to move forward. The controversy escalated when Hart decided to step down from hosting the Oscars, tweeting an apology to the LGBTQ community for his insensitive words from the past. Acknowledging that he didn't want to be a distraction on a night meant for celebration, Hart expressed sincere regret. In a later appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, DeGeneres urged him to reconsider, and despite facing backlash for defending Hart, he apologized once again to the LGBTQ community on his radio show, Straight from the Heart. However, he questioned the acceptance of change, asking, If you don't want to accept people for their change, then where are you trying to get to the equal part? In a January 2019 appearance on Good Morning America, Kevin Hart expressed his frustration with the ongoing Oscars controversy. He declared, I'm done with it. It gets no more energy from me. Emphasizing that he had addressed the issue multiple times, Hart stated, I'm over that, I'm over the moment, and I'm about today. When co-anchor Michael Strand asked about his evolution since the initial jokes, Hart responded assertively, saying, I have explained how I've evolved, which makes me say I'm over it. I'm not saying I've changed anymore. I'm not saying what I've done and what the new me is. I'm not giving any more explanation of who I am. I'm done. Refusing to delve into the Oscars situation again, Hart pointed out his numerous previous comments on the matter across various platforms. Describing the backlash and apology cycle as endless, 
He redirected the conversation to focus on the present, stating, I'm talking about today. I'm talking about me today and the energy that I have and what I can do on a daily basis. When Strahan brought up the possibility of Hart having a gay son, the comedian responded with a touch of sarcasm, saying, If anybody out there wants to believe that Kevin Hart is that much of a monster, that he wouldn't love somebody because of their choice in life, more power to them. Speaking of choices in life, many eyebrows have also been raised over his association with Diddy. Since November, a series of lawsuits have been filed against Diddy, with Cassie and several other women making serious accusations ranging from rape and sex trafficking to beatings, revenge porn, and drugging dating back to the early 1990s. It's noteworthy that Cassie settled her case just a day after filing for an undisclosed sum, and Diddy's lawyer emphasized that the settlement didn't imply any admission of wrongdoing. One particular lawsuit implicated Diddy and former bad boy president Harve Pierre in the gang rape of a 17-year-old girl. Diddy promptly denied these allegations, dismissing them as sickening and attributing them to individuals seeking a quick payday. Pierre also refuted the claims, labeling them as a tale of fiction and a desperate attempt for financial gain. In Cassie's own complaint, disturbing details emerged, alleging that Diddy directed her to ingest drugs, wear a masquerade mask, and engage in explicit acts with male sex workers while he observed coining the arrangement as a freak-off. Cassie's suit further asserted that Diddy subjected her to physical abuse, with his loyal network allegedly turning a blind eye to the rapper's behavior. What initially began as glamorous celebrity gatherings and drug-infused parties, as per the complaint, quickly transformed into a frightening and violent ordeal. Prior to the settlement, Diddy's lawyer strongly denounced Cassie's allegations as offensive and outrageous. The lawyer claimed that Cassie attempted to blackmail Diddy for $30 million and threatened to write a damaging tell-all about their relationship. Following these legal developments, former bad boy rapper Mark Curry, author of the 2009 expose Dancing with the Devil about Sean Diddy Combs, shared additional recollections with the YouTube channel Art of Dialogue. While his book highlighting Diddy's exploitative business practices flew under the radar in the past, recent lawsuits against Diddy have brought Curry's allegations back into the spotlight, suggesting a deeper and more troubling narrative than what was initially revealed in his book. In some recent YouTube clips, Mark Curry, the former bad boy rapper and author of the 2009 expose on Sean Diddy Combs, shared some eye-opening recollections with the channel Art of Dialogue. According to Curry, he claims that Diddy broke his ex-girlfriend Kim Porter's nose during a heated fight on a yacht. He also alleged that Diddy once threw a chair at a producer after overhearing them talking with Porter on a phone line he supposedly had tapped. Shockingly, Curry mentioned witnessing Diddy spiking women's drinks in a club, raising concerns given his implication that he continued to socialize with Diddy even after witnessing such behavior. This isn't the first time shots have been fired at Diddy's character. Former bad boy artist Mace called out alleged nefarious business tactics in 2019, claiming that Diddy knowingly starved artists who helped him obtain the Icon Award on the iconic bad boy label. Beyond the boardroom, accusations about Diddy's character have extended to his personal life. His ex-girlfriend Misa Hilton, in a series of cryptic Instagram posts in June, suggested there were issues with Diddy, emphasizing that everyone had to sit around for years and act like there was nothing wrong. In 2019, another ex-girlfriend, Gina Huin, accused Diddy of physical abuse, stating that everyone around him knew about it. However, her claims didn't gain as much attention as the recent lawsuits, which were filed just before the expiration of the New York State Survivors Act, temporarily lifting the state's statute of limitations on civil suits involving sexual misconduct. Powerful men accused of sexual misconduct often have a network of enablers. Surviving R. Kelly detailed the hangers-on who helped him recruit and house underage girls. Hassan Campbell, who accused Africa Bambata of molesting him, claimed the Zulu nation knew about the abuse. Both Cassie and Huin have referred to people around Diddy who turned a blind eye to his behavior. Now, some of those individuals are admitting to having known about his conduct. Kevin Hart, allegedly one of those who knew, has been reported to have attended parties with Diddy. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below.